Not enough rage. Need more 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 rage. I need to get closer. Warriors are the slowest class to level, but they are one of the most played classes, the best tanks, and a blast to play at 60. So why should you play one of these beefcakes in Classic WoW? Well, let's see what the Warrior brings to the table. Like I mentioned, Warrior is painfully slow to level. They are very gear-reliant and lack some of the useful utility and have no self-healing. You can only pull one or maybe two mobs at a time, and you'll likely have to eat after every pull or two. So you need to bring a lot of food and bandages. On a lighter note, warriors have a trick up their sleeve to help them out and it's called hamstring kiting. The basic strat is you use hamstring on a mob and run past to hit it every time your swing timer is off cooldown. This stops the mob from getting hits in between your attacks so you can minimize the damage you take and maximize the damage you can do. It's highly recommended you get a swing timer add-on so you can time this correctly as well. This method is great when dealing with higher level mobs and should be a skill every warrior should have up their sleeve. Okay, so you got two different routes when leveling as a warrior. It's the classic debate between arms versus furry. I, look, I meant f fury, fury, get that, get that off my screen. So fury does more damage, but it lacks utility compared to arms. To do maximum damage as fury, you're gonna have to abuse slash sitting. You want to get a macro for this, and the reason why you do it is so the mob you're fighting will get a critical hit on you, so you proc in rage for 25% more damage. The bonus for leveling for Fury is you don't need to spec into a specific weapon type to be efficient. You just slap on what's ever best. Usually, people respec at 40 to arms because of mortal strike. Now, arms does not do as much damage in the earlier levels, but it does have utility and I think that outweighs that negative. With arms, you get amazing spells like Sweeping Strikes, Tactical Mastery, Improved Charge, and Mortal Strike, just to name a few. Arms is much better at PvP, so I'd suggest picking the spec on a PvP server. There's one talent you're going to want to get, and that's Axe Specialization. This is because you get Whirlwind Axe at level 30, which is an iconic warrior weapon that does a crazy amount of damage, and you'll be using it for a while. I mean, just look at it too. I mean, at level 30, everybody else is using, like, a worn stick, or like a rusty dagger. And you got this awesome looking axe that looks like it's straight out of one of them animes. Also, try and group up with other players. The reason why warriors are so slow at leveling is the downtime they have between mobs. So if you get a healer, they can top you off and you can pull mob after mob. This will also increase your DPS too because your rage won't deplete over time. Also, don't be worried about not being able to tank dungeons. All you need to do is just slap on a shield and a one-hander and you'll be good to go. Of course, when you hit level 60, you might want to consider respecking if you want to tank. In PvE, Fury is going to be your go-to cookie cutter spec for DPS. Your rotation will be pretty simple. So you're going to mainly stay in Berserker Stance and use Bloodthirst, Whirlwind, and Heroic Strike when you're at high rage, but you may have to swap over to Battle Stance to use Overpower as well. When the boss gets to 20%, you just spam the ever-loving crap out of Execute. It's like if you see somebody at low health, like you, you, you'd be like an Execute machine, you know, like you're looking for people, 20%, you see somebody at 20%, boom, Execute! See somebody at 20%, boom, Execute, 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 Execute! The real challenge for DPS Warriors is going to be getting your gear. Now, warriors are the most popular class to play in Classic, so you'll have lots of competition. Not to mention, when getting some of your gear, you'll also have to compete against rogues, hunters, feral druids, and maybe some shamans. Pre-raid best in slot gear, like the Devilosaur set, is going to be crazy expensive when you first hit level 60, so finding ways to make money is critical to get good gear. Warriors aren't just the best tanks in Classic. They are the tanks in Classic. Most of your time when playing a tank will be focused on keeping threat and sundering armor, but other than that, it's about managing your cooldowns effectively. Spells like Shield Block, Thunderclap, and Demoralizing Shout should be kept up as much as possible. And Berserker's Rage is important to use against fights where the enemy can fear you. The only problem is you can only use the spell in Berserker's Stance, not Defensive. This is where Stance Dancing comes in, so basically the main strat that you're gonna do is you're gonna swap over to Berserker Stance, use Berserker's Rage, and then instantly swap back to Defensive Stance, and time it correctly. This is what separates the good tanks from the bad ones.
shield wall and last stand are your oh shit buttons, but last stand has a 10 minute cooldown so you need to use it wisely. Warrior tanks are always in the man in dungeons, but in raids you'll find some stiff competition because the amount of tanks required is so small in a 40 man raid. So warriors in general are pretty gear dependent, but this is most evident in PvP. The difference between having a pool noodle or ash candy will be night and day. Let me tell you though, once you do get that great gear, Warrior is easily the most fun class to annihilate people in BGs as. The biggest issue you'll face in PvP is getting towards your target in the first place. Hamstring is critical against mobile targets, but once you close that gap, they'll be in for some trouble. Frost Mages will be the bane of your existence. You'll get slowed, rooted, and annoyed once you finally get to them, and then they blink away. And then you might consider rerolling. Buy your tall one. Arms is your go-to spec for PvP because of the utility it offers, and I trust you'll find some fun in the class once you get some good gear. Warrior also has a pretty high skill ceiling because of the multitude of different cooldowns, stances, and neat little tricks to get the most out of your class. A brief example is that you can taunt hunter pets so they can attack you and break you out of traps or scatter shots. How often will you use this knowledge? Uh, well, probably not often, but knowing these little tricks can be super helpful in certain situations. Now for professions, I'd recommend cooking and maybe fishing while you're leveling. If you're eating every mob or two, why not take the time to make sure you get some good food that increases your stats, right? Also, don't forget to be leveling up first aid while you're leveling. You're going to be using it a lot on your path to 60 and an endgame as well. Blacksmithing is great because you can craft a multitude of great items like Invulnerable Mail, Titanic Leggings, or Arcanite Reaper. But the main item you're probably going to want to get is the Lionheart Helm. This helm is BIS. Forever. And no, I'm not even joking. You won't find a better helm for a Fury Warrior in all of Classic. Sure, you could just buy it off another blacksmith, but why not be the ones dishing them out instead? And look, this wouldn't be a Vanilla's Flavors episode without talking about engineering for a second. Engineering is especially useful for warriors in PvP because they can use the bombs to stun targets and close those gaps. Maybe then you'll even have a chance to touch a frost mage. So macros are something that will make your life so much easier in Classic WoW, especially for warriors. You'll need macros to help you out with stance dancing with just two simple clicks of a button. The only problem is you'll need an add-on called Super Macro, and this only works on, uh, undocumented servers. But once Classic comes out and add-ons start being made, I'll be sure to add a link in the description for a suitable mod. Warrior's go-to legendary is Thunder Fury. This legendary item is a status symbol for any warrior and the guild he's a part of. You'll need a lot of luck for the items needed to drop in Molten Core, and a lot of gold for the regions to obtain the weapon. You and your whole raid team will need to travel to Silphus and face against the Windseeker to get the weapon. And the weapon is usually given to the main tank of the guild. Whoever obtains such a mighty weapon must truly be an all-star player. Did someone say Thunder Fury? See, you guys thought I wasn't going to make this joke, but I made it! I mean During the beta of the game, warriors were widely received as the worst class ever. In the wake of all this negativity, a warrior named Indalamar showed people how OP warriors really are. He showcased that spells like Bloodthirst and Slam were stupidly overpowered at the time, leading to warriors being nerfed pretty heavily back in beta. Indalamar was a trailblazer in how to play a warrior, and this even got him a job at Blizzard as an itemization developer. He's got a few items named after him, and holds a place in the Warrior Hall of Fame. And you too could be in the Hall of Fame if you choose a warrior. I'd recommend this class for anyone who isn't afraid of a challenge when leveling willing to compete against others for gear, and someone who loves tanking and melee-focused combat, as well as a high skill ceiling in PvP. Well there we go, the most requested class in the books. The only question now is what class do you guys want to see next? Be sure to like and subscribe and go to my Twitter and follow that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!